Hi everyone and welcome to this module on cloud computing fundamentals. We will be discussing on the cloud computing basics in this entire module and the service models and how the cloud services they are integrated with each other. So let's get started. So here we'll be talking about what exactly was the scenario before cloud computing, why exactly we needed, what, what exactly we mean by cloud computing, the different types, the different types of deployment models, and the service models with their integrations. So if we go back almost two decades at that point of time, if we had a requirement of sharing the data with others, especially those who are far away located from each from us, then that was a troublesome task. And same thing has been showcased in this example as well. Suppose let's say we want to host a website. So there are two scenarios we can go ahead with. We can either buy a stack of servers, we have to set up our own data centers, where we have to take care of the power, backup, maintenance, everything. And then we can have the data made available to the other end users. We can do that, or we can go ahead and make use of the cloud computing vendors who have already set up their entire data centers in almost every major location all around the globe. And using that, we can have the access to data the way we need. So this is what cloud computing is all about. Now. If we compare the deployment to on-premise as well as on cloud, so on-premise means when we have set up the entire data center locally. So we are not relying over any cloud vendors. So when we deploy something locally, then we have to pay for the entire infrastructure first. That means we have to pay for the office space or whatever we can say space that we may have bought or rented. Then we have to take care of the power, the backup, the maintenance, the configuration, we have to hire a dedicated team because a specific team is, or we can say a single person is not going to be responsible, is not going to be held responsible for doing everything. And that is the case that with on-premise. And plus we also have to hire someone to maintain the data security as well, because again, security is going to be an important concept because we don't want to we don't want, want our servers to be compromised we don't want those servers to be lost to be to be you can say stolen away by anyone and because again if our data centers are compromised then whoever is connecting to our data centers that means our end customers they will not be able to use or you can say access the application that is what we have to take care of when we are going with the on premise servers but if we compare this to cloud computing, so it is all based on pay as you go model. That means here we don't have to worry about what exactly we have purchased and we don't have to pay any kind of upfront amount. We have to pay exactly for what we are using. For example, if you have used one GB of data, then we have to pay only for one GB. If you are using two cores of CPU, you have to pay only for two cores, nothing less, nothing more. And there are no servers, there is no physical space required here because you don't have to worry about setting this up locally. You can simply subscribe to these services and have the, and get the job done. And since the entire configuration, maintenance, security, everything is going to be taken by cloud vendor. So we don't have to worry about anything. We can sit back, just focus on getting our application and data in these servers, and then we can get the job done. So this is what we have in terms of cloud computing setup. So that's why instead of managing files on a, lo on a local storage device, cloud computing can make it possible to save them over internet. And using that, we can have the data accessible by everyone to whom we want to give the access to. We can even have a control who will be allowed to have the access and who won't be having the access. So that is what we have in terms of what exactly cloud computing is. Now we'll be moving on to the next part, which is types of cloud computing. So there are two different models that we can work with. First of all, we have deployment model, and then we have the service models. Now under deployment models, we have public cloud, private cloud, and we have a mixture of both that is hybrid cloud. And under the service models, we have the infrastructure as a service, platform as a service, and then we have software as a service. So we will be going through these different models one by one and the types available in these models so that you can all have a complete clarity on them one by one. First of all, if you go to deployment models, so there are three, public, private, and hybrid. So public, as the name suggests, it is accessible and available to everyone. Private is something which is owned by a single person, or we can say it is restricted so that 
no one will be able to access it until and unless we define the access. And then we have hybrid cloud, which is more like a combination. So we can rent a private taxi. So with the, the time period where we are renting the private taxi, it belongs to us. No one else can get into the cab until and unless we release it. So that kind of model is what we refer as hybrid cloud. So the public cloud includes all the cloud vendors, like we have AWS, Microsoft Azure, IBM, DigitalOcean, OCIs, that means Oracle Cloud. So the, the entire infrastructure is made available to general public and anyone can subscribe to these vendors and they can get the access to it. So that is what we have in terms of public cloud. Private cloud is the infrastructure which is operated by a single company and can be managed by the organization. For example, if a company is going to deploy things in a simple localized environment. This is a one that is preferred by the companies to set up the in-house applications. For example, there are some internal applications that are meant to be accessed only by the employees of company. So that is something that is not meant to be exposed to public. So that is what we can have in terms of private cloud. Then we have hybrid cloud. So it consists of all the functionalities. So as the name suggests, it's a hybrid. That means it is a combination of both public and private cloud as well. So all the federal agency that we have here. Just like so this is something which is preferred by the fintech companies. So fintech companies means financial tech companies like we have Paytm, we have all the financial institutions. So as a part of compliance, they cannot store the entire data because there is heavily user data. So that is something that cannot be stored on entirely on the public cloud. And that's why they try to keep the data in the private cloud, which is going to be tightly secured, whereas the web servers to process things, they can be stored in the public cloud because they have to also adhere to multiple government agencies and as well as the, the multiple compliance-based rules in order to function properly. So these are what we refer as hybrid cloud platforms. Next, moving on to the service models. So we have three main service models available. We have infrastructure as a service, platform as a service, and then we have software as a service offered here. So let's say if a business needs a virtual machine, so we have three main service models available here, infrastructure as a service, platform as a service, and then we have software as a service. So when you talk about infrastructure as a service, now we can go back almost, let's say two decades. Now this is same like buying a PC completely for us, where we have only the infrastructure. So here we are not referring to any kind of OS at all. So this is a similar model that we have in terms of infrastructure as a service. When we buy a PC, we only get the hardware components, and we have to take care of the operating system along with any other application deployment. So this is what we refer as infrastructure as a service model. Whereas if you talk about the other component, like we have the other service models, that like we have platform as a service. So in here, when we are getting the infrastructure, so we are not getting only the infrastructure, we are getting the OS as well as other software components installed and configured on top of it. So this is what we refer as a platform as a service. So here we don't have to worry about setting up the OS. Let's say here we can get the, o the Linux or Windows based deployments that we can directly work with. Then we have software as a service. So software as a service is just like having any cloud application. So here we don't have to worry about setting up any kind of OS or hardware or even installing the applications. We will be getting, let's say we have got the hardware, we have got the OS, plus we have also got the entire, let's say, MS Office suit. We have got other applications that we can use right away. So this is what we refer as software as a service. Now, when we buy, when we go ahead and subscribe to any cloud vendor, so they are going to be examples for infrastructure as a service because as a vendor, they have set up the entire physical infrastructure at their end. So we don't have to worry about that. And we can choose exactly what kind of RAM, what kind of processor we need. If we refer as platform as service, then there are multiple managed services. Like we have one service is let's say RDS, which is a fully managed database service. So when we are going with RDS and we have to only choose what kind of database engine we want, and that is going to take care of deployment, provisioning of database servers, the backup, maintenance, everything is going to be taken care of by our by platform as a service only. And then we have software as a service where we have all the cloud applications. Like we have maps. If you want to get directions from point A to point B, if you want to send email to someone, we can directly subscribe to Gmail without doing any kind of local setup at all. 
So this is what we refer as software as a service model. Now, so as we discussed, infrastructure is where we can have all the infrastructure we need. So here we have all the core hardware requirements. So th those are all going to be part of infrastructure as a service itself. Whereas platform is where we are getting the software plus the environment that is needed for running those hardwares. Like we have the app engine, we have the EBS, we have RDS that we discussed. These are all core services offered under the cloud platforms. And then we have SaaS where we can get the fully managed environment already up and running. So we don't have to pay anything. Like we have got the entire Google Cloud services. Like we have Google Sheets, Google Docs, we have Gmail, we have Maps. If we are having the session through Zoom, so we don't have to install anything. We, it's all like pay as you go model. So these are all examples for software as a service models. And then we have the main differences. So as we discussed, when we go, go for on-premise servers, we have to worry about everything. That means starting with from setting up the hardware, that means the networking component, we have to worry about setting up the device, taking care of networking till the application deployment. Everything has to be managed by us. So this is what we have in terms of on-premise. In the infrastructure, we had discussed that we don't have to worry about setting up the networking till virtualization technology. So that is what we have in terms of IS. But from the OS till application deployment, we have to take care of that. Whereas in platform as service, we don't have to worry anything about the deployment till runtime. That means the entire environment that is going to be needed for running the application. For example, if you are looking to deploy any application on Python, so you do need to have a Python environment up and running. You are looking to host your Node.js application. So you do need to have Node environment up and running on top of the physical server so that you can directly deploy it. So here we only have to worry about the data as well as the application configuration. So this is what we have in terms of platform and service. And as you can see here, under SaaS, we don't have to worry anything at all. It's all like plug and play system. We can subscribe to services and get the job done. That's a core difference between these three service models as compared to on-premise deployment that we have here. So similar example is given here. So we can consider a task where we are planning to make a pizza. So in the mail at home, we have to take care of everything from cheese till dining table, till serving it on dynamic table. And if you talk about take and bake, then we don't have to worry about cheese, toppings, sauce, pizza dough. We had only focus on cooking it. And then under the pizza delivered, we don't have to worry anything about the pizza still from cheese till electric gas. It is all cooked. We only have to focus on soda and having it served on our enemy table. And then if you talk about dining out, then everything from the base of cheese till getting the pizza delivered right away on our dining table when we are sitting at a table in, a, in any restaurant, that is going to be handled by the restaurant itself. So all as a part of software as a service. Now, there are multiple cloud computing providers like we have AWS, Microsoft Azure, we have VMware, we have the DigitalOcean, IBM Cloud, Google Cloud Platform, we have from Oracle Cloud. So there are endless number of providers where AWS has been the market leader since its inception back in 2006, followed by Microsoft Azure and then GCP and then other vendors fall into the place. So this is what we have in terms of cloud computing basics. I hope you really enjoyed and you got to know what these cloud computing models are in detail and see you all in our next module.